All right, now this is phase two, or video two, and we've already got the ribbon hinge, and there's tape on it so that we can just paint. There's a rubber gasket running underneath it that is EPDM roofing material, and there is a foam gasket that goes back here, so when the lid closes, it seals a foam gasket, eighth inch thick, that'll go around the whole rim, uh, three quarter inch wide. And we got one coat of paint on it. You can see it's still shiny. And this is the door, or the hatch, I guess you'd say, that goes on for this large bank of batteries. This metal right here, and you can see it has that little lip on it, and we're going to shear that off, and we end up with this metal, so it's the same metal, and it's, it's real rigid, and it becomes the corner protectors and strengtheners for this box, because the box is just plywood, that is screwed and glued and although it's fairly rigid putting screws directly into plywood is not a strong thing to do um, it's fairly strong with the glue added but as you can see here this will make a very nice addition to strengthening it up using the same three-quarter pan heads that we used up here in the hinge and we still have another coat of paint to put on most of the outside of the box, some labeling stickers, uh, meters, there'll be some meters going in, um, along with multiple big disconnect switches that'll disconnect each individual bank. So the way this is being set up to deliver massive amperage is running one watt wire from here up through here and I'll show you that step coming up next on how it's going to be mounted and what we're using for it. All right, now in part two video here, I have got a Sparta Carlisle board that is a fairly high temperature, handles about 300 degrees, and I don't imagine we're gonna hit 300 degrees with what I'm doing here. Um, that's going to be placed right on the very back of this cabinet so that you have a complete mounting spot for your two huge copper bus bars and it's insulated. The board will be screwed to the back. The cables independently, seven for positive, seven for negative, will all come up and go here. They'll all come up and go here. Fuse breakers will be down here across the front because inside on this side of the battery will be a fuse that'll be attached in every one of these banks for 250 amp is all. That's all I'm using. That'll give me over 1500 amps of flow. And if I have a battery failure, it'll generally blow better being on the negative side in this case. Um, that's been my experience. So I will be putting the fuse on the draw side, the negative side over here inside the case, a big A and L for each one of these. And then off of that, it'll run across and up through the bottom there. Drilled with a 5 8 hole for one odd wire running up and then attaching up here to a big copper bus bar. Now, this copper bus bar is 3 8 of an inch and put bolts in it, brass bolts. They will attach to each one of these seven leads, seven across this one, seven on this one, and then large connectors on both ends. I'll show you those in the, uh, later on. This bar is being cut in half, sorry, 10 and a half inches wide, or 10 and a half inches long, four inches wide, so it's two inch by 10 and a half, three eighths inches thick. And the people who try to sell you this big load of garbage about using solid copper for current, apparently are only doing so because they're selling welding wire or they're selling some kind of a wire the fact is is that one voltage does not travel on the outside of wire that's called fraud uh, secondary the reason they have stranded wire on a welding machine is because it is flexible it's not because it's better it's because it's flexible the inside of this welder, and you can verify this by opening your own up if you own one, it has in it copper bus bars made of solid copper before it reaches the point in which it's connected to with the cabling. Why would they use that? Well, because copper 
pure copper has a higher electron passage. This stranded wire is no better than this copper bus bar. In fact, the copper bus bar actually can carry more. The molecules are solid. The electrons travel through. This wire, when you put a clamp on it, doesn't guarantee 100% of its duty cycle of the wire because the clamp is the weak point. Some of your strands might get cut, they might not be perfect. It's not perfect. So we're not using uh, the stranded wire for anything other than getting the power to this bar. From there, with it mounted on the back, we will have all of our power coming in to those main bus bars. The same reason in your house you have bus bars. Now, the next step for this is to put the latches on and foam gaskets on and we're mounting that here in just a few seconds and I'll show you how that's working out. All right, now part of step two here, video two is we put this piece of hat metal. Now y'all guys who don't know what hat metal is, this is hat metal and I ain't painted yet on this bottom half but I put the piece of hat metal in and it makes plywood door or plywood uh, lid like this very rigid to where it's not going to be bowing or if somebody sits on it they won't damage it. Secondary, we have now drilled all the holes in for the one out wire that's going to run up and hit these 3 8 inch bolts. These are 3 8 inch brass bolts going through a very large bar of copper that's two inches wide and uh, about 10 and 3 quarters, I had to measure, it's 10 and 3 quarters inches long copper buses. And then those two big bolts right there, uh, they're just in there for size, but I've got a set of brass ones that are also 5 8 Those are 5 8 inch. And those are going to be carrying the amperage to the, uh, the breakers and uh, all the other 12 volt systems. Uh, and this right and that'll be with four aught coming off of those and it has very large copper washers and high clamping capacity this over here this material here is is uh is non-crushable this it will not crush and it takes three i looked it up takes 345 degrees for it to deflect so it will not crush these are brass bolts that are going through here right now, 3 8 in diameter, old school style. They'll have a big washer on them like this does, and they'll be tightened up real tight. And then every one of my one aught lines, my one aught cables to each two batteries will come up all the way up to here, come through. There's seven for seven, you see? And that way we have one that runs from here up and I'll cut all the wires equal length and then we're going to put in something going across there to lash the cabling off on so it don't lay on top of the batteries. And at that point, she's ready to roll over and hook up to the system. Not bad, we're going to put some decals on it and a, a couple of meters. I've got a, a large five inch LCD a meter that is three digits on each side and it's going to go right here in the middle and set of wires running back up to right here we'll just run that one up right across the back back here and come up and connect on to these bolts that are also brass and they're also embedded in the copper 3 8 thick copper so that way I can grab this anywhere I want I can also run my uh, extra power odds and ends off of these bolts back here if I want to there's your build there that's how that got put together and when it mounts on the wall we'll cut off the excess back here and there is a plate that's going to go on the back another uh, uh, actual poly plate that's a little bigger than this one that's going to keep it have bolts going through keep anything from touching back here that's the end of video two Look for another video when I get the chance to show all the wiring harnesses and everything else going on it, and, it, and it's almost done.